Well, it is my privilege and honor to introduce our guest speaker tonight, and most of you that were here six months ago in January uh, got to meet Dr. Duku. He didn't get to minister at that time, but he was here for us. He, he was here for us as, as they received us here at Victory, and we so thank you for that, Doctor. We, we, we thank you for being here. We thank you for, for taking your time out, and we are so excited. We... we you know, have you ever been with, with, with someone or met someone and, and you just connect? Yeah. There's just a connection. I, I had the privilege to meet Dr. Duku in 2003 in Kenya. He was on a, uh, a mission trip along with myself. He was there, actually, uh, and that was a trip that Dr. Leon had, had uh, sent a bunch of people over there, and I got the chance to meet him, but we never really connected because it probably wasn't the right timing. You know, timing's everything, isn't it? And uh, so it was in 2008, something like that, I don't know. In, in, in Tampa, we, we yeah. Yeah, and Brandon, uh, we, we got to meet then, but he's been such a dear friend to us. Uh, we have had the opportunity, both of us, to go to his awesome church that he has in Butterworth, South Africa. It's called Fountain of Love Ministries, and they are great people, and we've talked about them, and we'll probably have some of them up here. Uh, so, And it would also be an awesome thing for us to be able to go to his church. Amen. So we could plan something like, like that too, but, but uh, Dr. Bishop Edward Duku, come on forth. Hallelujah. Welcome him. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you and thank you. I don't know what to say. I don't know if I deserve all this. Warm welcome. Thank you so much. I want to thank my dear friends. Dr. Sprague is a physician, and uh, I will come to Sioux City, Iowa, and uh, more than 15 years ago, and you will leave his wife to travel with me for five hours. I'll be ministering in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, the wife will have to stay there while he takes care of his clinic until I'm gone before the wife goes back. He's been to my house more than 10 times, came to my church, and uh, we, where I am is uh, predominantly blacks because the whites moved out after 1994 um, when it became part of South Africa. It used to be a homeland. We had four homelands at that time. And so this white man comes and carries my daughter, who is 17 years now, my last girl, in the streets. A white man, a physician, right on the shoulders, and everybody was looking at him. They didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Such a lovely man. And uh, he's written three books, powerful books on money, on finances. He ministers on televisions and uh, on radios and travel around the world, Europe, Africa, and other places. The wife is a sister. Um, I'm the only one, apart from the husband, he keeps, he's got two daughters. All of them married. One is in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and the other one in Connecticut with their husbands and children. And I'm the only one, apart from the husband, that this beautiful white lady will keep my measurement in her purse now. <laughs> so he goes for shopping for me. I don't know. The last time you stopped shopping for me now. I told you I'm buying new shirts. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 and so we've come such a long way, and I want to thank you. I came in um, in January when I left here. I was in Canada. And you, you, it's, it's so amazing. You remember I flew in, I think, on the 3rd of January when I was in Canada, in Toronto. And then I came in yesterday on the 4th. Ah. Exactly six months as you came in. So it's just prophetic. It's not just for nothing. Right. God is doing something new in the house. And um, I want to thank God for you. I'm so blessed. I know my friend. You see, doctors are very picky. And uh, I saw him talking to the wife that this is a powerful song. When you were ministering, Elisa, we really enjoy you tonight. What an anointing here. And uh, your pastors, Pastor Tony, the wife says he cannot sing, but 
Pastor Tony, whenever I used to go to the old church, he would play the guitar and sing at the same time. And when he took over, you saw what is happening here. Such a powerful anointing to preach at the same time and sing. It's a unique gift. You don't get that often. And so we really want to thank God for you and your children. Um, what a mature man, very level-headed man. Uh, what do we call him? Anthony. And the second the girl, the second one, Christiana drove me uh, from Tampa yesterday. Was it? No, three days ago. Because yesterday I've forgotten I was watching soccer. <laughs> I, I, I was watching the true football. <laughs> Americans think you know English, but you don't know English. <laughs> you don't know what a football is. I don't know if your football is football or handball. <laughs> I've never seen that anywhere. And so we had fun. They came and with their permission, they allowed them to spend a day with me there. And so we went around four miles and enjoyed ourselves and watched soccer. And uh, they have adopted a Colombian girl and then a, Col a, a Brazilian boy. So yesterday was a difficult day for us <laughs> before we went for the match. Uh, they gave the boy a basement in the apartment. The doctor had a very big house in Sioux City. And this Brazilian boy grew in the house. They moved to Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, the boy was there at the same time. They got married. So when we went in, I told Dr. Spray, that doctor, you are going to support Brazil because of your son. And I told Kathy, you are going to support Colombia because of your daughter. But I'm going to help you with support. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Day one yesterday, we're going to have a wonderful time tonight. It's my maiden night here, and uh, I want to thank them for their love. Um, they are the first ones to put me in nice hotels when I come into Springfield. At uh, the times, I will get there to send the woods, rent a car, and drive, and get there to my hotel room, and uh, everything will be there. Where is Brother Terry? Thank you so much. You gave me too much food. I don't know what I was going to do without in the hotel. And... Uh, I have part tomorrow morning. I'm preaching to, uh, on Sunday, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is Sunday at St. Petersburg, and then on Monday I'm flying to Jackson, Mississippi. I'm doing a citywide crusade of black and white. Come on. And uh, I did something. I've got a medical doctor friend, a clinical psychologist coming from Canada to join me, and he's black. And so I told the pastor, the president of the pastors' union there, that look here, I don't want this to be boring. Because it's two black guys coming, and we have, it's a mixture now, so it's not going to work well. I need a white man to come with us. So I'm going to bring Dr. Sprague. <laughs> so quickly, Dr. Sprague is getting taken today. I will be there until Thursday, and I rent a car, drive through Tennessee, Memphis, and then go to Little Rock and spend time with my business friend. And so he is coming on Wednesday. I will introduce his books, and he speaks on finances. I will leave him there, and then on Thursday morning, I will drive and leave him, spend time, and then next week, Friday, a week today, no, a week tomorrow. Today is Saturday. A week today, I will be on the flight. Uh, I will be on the flight going to St. Louis again, and then drive to uh, Springfield, Illinois, do my last meeting, and then go back to New York and fly for 23 hours to, through Dubai to South Africa. So it's so good to be here tonight, and uh, you will never go back disappointed. How many of you know you will never go to the Lord and go back disappointed? Hallelujah. Amen. What a great church. Come on, lift your hands and worship him right now, wherever you are. Yes. What a great church. You know how to receive. Yes. Get ready to receive tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, shout to the Lord and say, tonight is my night. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I refuse. To go back the same way I came tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. When, whenever you come into contact with anointing, you don't go back the same. Yes. Whenever in 1 Samuel chapter 10, when Saul was anointed, the Bible says he became a different man. Yes. So whenever the anointing comes on you, you become a different man. Yes. I'll be speaking about what anointing can bring you tonight. Amen. And the anointing is not a respecter of persons. Right. 
if you allow yourself, if God can use a donkey, he can use you. If God can use a prostitute and make him become a descendant of Jesus, God can use you as well. It doesn't matter where you're coming from and anything. What is important is just allowing yourself. What is the meaning of the word anointing? It's a very simple word. It means to be chosen by God. Someone who is chosen. It means to be picked out or to be selected. And who do we want to select us? God. Amen. Your goal for coming here tonight, what an amazing night. Our pastor Frank wanted me to come in in a different date. But you don't know what God will do, and Pastor Tony. But you know something? Because this is a special weekend when most of you go for holiday. I know Americans work hard and you play hard at the same time. And that is why you got so many games here. Soccer is not a major game to you, but you're doing wonderful. <laughs> you beat my, my, I'm a missionary in South Africa with my wife. Both of us from, <laughs> both, both of us are from Ghana. And uh, we beat you in Germany. We beat you in South Africa four years ago, but you made sure this year you beat us. In Brazil, that is so good anyway. And so, Americans play hard. That is one thing, and you work so hard. Thank God for yesterday. What a great nation. Uh, I go to London a lot, and I tell the London people, that you know what the problem with you English? What you say is God bless the queen. And so the queen is blessed. And the queen lives in, I took one of my pastors, we did a survey of the Buckingham Palace, and... Uh, I say, you see the problem you have? So your homes are this small. You live in cracker boxes. Yeah, come on, come on. And you know the reason why? Because you're saying, God bless who? The queen. And so who is blessed? The queen. And Americans say, God bless who? America. And who is blessed? America. Everything is big here. <laughs> big cars and big everything and big food. If you order food, they order food for me. I have to carry it to my hotel room. It was too big. Because God bless who? America. And so um, who is blessed? America. Keep on like that. It's a wonderful, precious nation, and we pray for you. Without the U.S., there will be no gospel. Yeah. And we want to thank God for you. Let, let me try and try and finish up because I want to lay hands on people and prophesy on you and encourage you tonight so you will walk in that anointing. You need that from time to time. And so I'm talking about anointing tonight. And uh, you know, Elisa and uh, the brother, I don't know his name, wonderful voice as they were leading us under the anointing, you could feel the presence of the Lord. In the Old Testament, in the, in the Torah, Moses, when he had to choose people to do everything, the artisans and the fashion designers who did the robe of the priest, they had to be anointed. Not any ordinary person was picked. As Pastor Tuaprain was saying that the spending time with you is that you can walk in the anointing of God. We are waiting. I have five young white guys, boys and girls from Oklahoma City came to spend two weeks with us. The youngest was 13 at that time. It's their young adults and uh, they spent two weeks, wonderful time there. And uh, we can't wait to have some of you and uh, take you to the safari and see if uh, the zebras will begin to chase you around can be so interesting. Pastor Tony was patting the cheetah, and uh, three of them trained like that anyway. But uh, if they tell you to back up, then you need to do that. They can be very scary at the same time. We're talking about the anointing. The anointing breaks every yoke. And I want you to know that let it be your goal as you come to victory, Sarasota, that God, my goal is I want to be your choice. You don't come here for anyone. You come here for God. And you want to be God's choice. Yeah. The most important thing, you're going to see the reason why I will tell you nine things and we will be done. Why you need to be God's choice. The most important thing I want is not about your degrees. It's not about your education, your background. It doesn't come in. God doesn't choose people based on that. He chooses people based on the condition of their hearts. That is the resume God needs from you. If God is looking from any bio, he looks at your heart. And that is why we need to come to him with clean hearts and say, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you everything within me. I'm 
the man called Samuel was sent to go and anoint one of the sons of Jesse. The man went and uh, Jesse had six sons. And so he said, the Lord has sent me to anoint one of your sons. So bring them up. He brought them, he saw Eliab, the first son. And the Bible says he was well built. His shoulders was above everyone. And the first thing he said is when he saw him, he said, surely this is the one. In 1 Samuel and chapter number 16 and verse 7. And God said, you made a mistake. It's a powerful statement and victory. I want this to be your goal. When you come here, come with your heart. Don't let anything influence you. Don't, 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 don't get, um, what, what word do I use? I want to use the right word for you to understand. Don't get corrupt by anything. Don't let anything corrupt you. Come with a true worship that you want to please God in everything that you do. My goal is to please him. And if you please him and you become God's choice, you can see what will happen. And I said, God's choice doesn't matter. People may have forsaken you for various reasons. You are going to see that tonight. So the man went, he brought the first son, and he said, you made a mistake. This is not the one. And that's why verse 7 says that for man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks where? At the heart. So he says God rejected all the six. How many children do you have, Pastor Tony? Three. You see, it was very easy to do that. If you don't know how many children you have, then excuse me to say, brother, forgive me. Probably you might be an African man. <laughs> you know why I'm saying that? My father had four wives as a king in Ghana with 17 seed. And apart from that legal ones in the marriage, he had others also from around. And so um, that is where we practice polygamy, where um, it's dying out now. But that is what goes on in Africa most of the time. We're not very careful. We are careless. And so this man, I think Jesse was behaving like an African man. Now, if somebody asks me how many children do I have, I don't struggle to say two girls. Three, very easy, one girl and two boys. They know, very easy. If I ask Dr. Sprague, how many children do you have? I think he's not going to make a mistake and tell me four. Will you tell me two girls? And so listen to this now. When that happened, the prophet have to ask the man. When God refused all the six, the prophet asked the man. He says, don't you yet have another son? I don't know if you know what that means. Somebody comes to your home and says, call your children. And it was specific, your sons. And you call six of them. And all of them do not qualify for what they've been called for. And then the person has to ask you, don't you have another son? I don't know if you understand what is going on. Something fishy is going on there. It means that the reason why that happened was David was not recognized in that home. Because David's mother was a prostitute. You've never heard that before. David's mother, that is why in Psalm 51, after David's affair with Bathsheba, he wrote Psalm 51 and said, in sin was I conceived and in sin was I born. Let me tell you something. God is not a respecter of persons. If you can use somebody like me, he can use you, and you should be your desire that I want the best out of God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and say, I want to be God's choice. Hallelujah. Somebody here want to be the choice of God tonight? Somebody here want to be the choice of God tonight? Hallelujah. And do not allow anything. That is why it doesn't matter the circumstances surrounding your birth. It's not about education. It's not about how much money your social status. It doesn't come in. God is looking for people who will say, I've come, I give you myself, and God is ready to use you. Hallelujah. Amen. He's ready to take you to another level. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, lift your hands and say, I have a strong, a great future. Hallelujah. Amen. We have what future? A great future. Hallelujah. Amen. And nothing is going to stop me in Jesus' name. I decree it. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, Hallelujah, somebody. Come on, shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 
I love this church. I see white people here, but it's not white people because I don't like white people. I thank God I'm not in a white church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody has say hallelujah. hallelujah. And let me tell you, brother, I have a problem with black people also. <laughs> so I don't know where I belong to now. I like kingdom people. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. When I sit with them and I meet them, I don't see color. I see brothers, hallelujah. If you still see color, there's a problem with you. Your mind is not renewed yet. And let me tell you, if you don't renew your mind, you are going to have problem when we get to heaven. Because heaven is not for whites. And heaven is not for blacks. And so, unfortunately, I may be your next door neighbor. And in the morning, I'm knocking at the door. I say, hey, brother, get out. It's time for worship. And you open the door and see a black face like this. And your day, you destroy your day. That is why without a renewed mind, you are not getting there. Hallelujah. I say, hallelujah, say. Come on, somebody, lift your hands and worship him. Hallelujah. Shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. We are one. We are washed by the blood. I don't behave black. If you're looking to see a black man, I'm not one because I don't behave black. You won't get that. I behave kingdom. So if I tell you I'll be there 2 o'clock, I'll be there 2 o'clock. There's nothing like African time. We don't go like that. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. That is the way kingdom people behave. How many of you understand that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me if I went wrong. Up at the altar right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout the anointing. He breaks every yoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And come on, lift your hands and say, I'm going to be God's choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You see, it's exciting to be in the law. Yeah. This my trip, I flew in two weeks ago. I flew for 26 hours from East London to Devon, Devon to Dubai, Dubai to New York, New York to um, Chicago, Chicago to Oklahoma City. 26 hours to my first stop. I preached two weeks. I got there at, I left on Thursday and I got there on Saturday morning in, uh, in American time. And I have to preach that night in Oklahoma City and preach in Edmond on Sunday morning and uh, flew out from there, went to Fort Smith, Arkansas, from there to Tulsa, Oklahoma, went to St. Louis and came back to Chicago right here on TVs and this gets so busy tight. But you know the reason why? It's the anointing of God, somebody. That's right. Somebody desire the anointing of God. Come on, I just... Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know why I said I love this church? It's not a white church. White people want to be gentle. They don't make noise, quiet, that kind of thing, dignified. That's why I don't want to go to white churches because Jesus will pass you by. How many of you understand that? The Bible says the blind man sat by the roadside and he could not see. So Jesus was passing by. And the only way he could get Jesus' attention by shouting. Somebody shout to the Lord this evening. Shout to the Lord for your breakthrough. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You know something? Pastor, when he shouted, the people told him to keep quiet. You are making noise. And the more they told him to keep quiet, the more she shouted. And when he shouted, you know, somebody, you know how his miracle came. The miracle came because of shouting. Yeah. And Jesus heard him shouting. And he said that this man is shouting too much. There must be a need. What do you need? Somebody said that at times the only language Jesus understands is shouting. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And come on, say, I refuse to let anyone shut me down. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, when I come here, I come here to get God's attention. 
and I will do whatever it takes to get his anointing. Yoro bo bo bo, hallelujah. I say hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The book of Isaiah, chapter number 45, verse 1 to 3. My friend wrote a powerful book, The Cyrus Anointing, which people will order them in bulk in other places to teach with. Probably, I think sometime, Pastor Tony and Fran may consider getting him to come down and do a teaching, a seminar on that. They live close by on that, which will be a blessing to you people here. Amen. Because he has another book called The Money is in the Mantle. Come on. The, 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 the relationship between the priests, the kings, and the prophet. There are people who are anointed in this church only to make money. Come on. So that the gospel can go on. Yeah. Yeah. And we need that. Yeah. We need to encourage them. The pastor needs to identify them and anoint them with that authority to make what? Wealth, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter number 45 and verse number 1 to 3. The Bible says that says... The Lord to who? Cyrus who what? His what? Anointed. Somebody say anointed. anointed. Do you know this man we're talking about? Cyrus was an outcast. He was not a Jew. And if you read his history, he was somebody who was rejected, have a difficult background growing up. I did a particular study on this man. And the Lord tells him that, Cyrus, you are my what? Anointed. Somebody say, I am going to be God's anointed. Be God's anointed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it takes. I want to be who's anointed. God's oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and thank God for your life. Thank him for your life. Yes. Thank him for your life tonight. Yes. Pastor Tony, Pastor Frank, what a beautiful, what an amazing church. People here are hungry for God. I go to churches. You know that. I travel all over to Europe, to South America, to the Caribbean, all over Africa, to Asia. I, I've gone to more than 40 states out of the 50 in the U.S., Canada, all over. But when I came here tonight, I could see there's liberty here where people will come and shout and worship. You see my doctor friend lifting the hands, as I told you about physicians. I don't like them because at times they feel they know it all, the physicians now. <laughs> I love him. He's such a great guy, very humble guy. Loves the Lord dearly. He flew with a wife purposely about 10 years ago to attend my friend a millionaire's wedding in South Africa. And uh, the only country in the world where they speak with clicks. That is the way they do. The only, my church, when you come, when they sing, it's like that. That is the way. And when I preach, somebody has to translate. And that is the way they do. They are singing and everything. I don't know how they do that, how they click that. They have the condition of the tongue where at times you put it up, at times you put it here, at times you put it three positions. One goes up, and that is the Q, the, that one. And the other one goes here, is the X. And the other one comes behind the thief, is the C. So in their alphabet, they've got that inside. Now, beautiful language, beautiful people. Our doors are open to you. Come and we will treat you with all royalty. Hallelujah. That is a home. And uh, I will get you busy anyway. You understand that. Get you preach and get you see animals. And I live 40 minutes from Mandela's place where you was buried. And so when, during the barrier, they closed our town because Oprah Winfrey flew, Prince Charles flew, and they drove through the city Badawaf to where uh, the funeral was going on. I've got 20 more minutes. I say I'm not a black man, so let me try and finish up tonight. <laughs> it's my maiden visit here. So I go by time. My friend, when we got here, and uh, he's known me for some time, but he doesn't still trust me. But leave him. He's, he's a boy from Iowa. Those are the way he behaves. Iowa boys behave like that. So you leave him. My big brother, you know what? When we got here, he says, hey, Dr. Duke, take your books out of my car because you're an African man. And if you preach late, I take my car and drive. I say, you can go. <laughs> that is what he told me when we arrived here. Now. We have fun. When we meet, he's my big brother. He's 10 years older than me. And we have fun. We love each other. We do whatever. He will stay in my house when we come. That, that is the way the kingdom goes. Hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you need to desire the anointing. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm speaking about how many things and we are done. Nine. When I came here, I gave you that, and I want to do that. That's my amazing message here. We, my doors are open to you. We will take care of you and do everything. And God is going to expand this ministry. You've you got people, Pastor Brian, we've been talking. I asked them a question when I came. The moment he got to Dallas, he sent me his new numbers. And uh, he wants to work with me. One of my friends in Germany at times, I can go to four countries within two weeks in Europe from Germany to Belgium, down to France, and to, to uh, where Holland, doing meetings in different churches. And so we are desiring to work together. I believe in protocol, so I asked them about that, going to give him a call before I leave. Great man, I love that man, such an amazing man. Amen. Your former pastor was a great man Amen. with such a great heart. Very humble man, I'm very anointed. I, I get so touched when I see people like that. Sense of God, we need to desire the anointing. It makes all the difference. And as I said, the anointing is simple. That God, you become God's what? Choice. Yeah. God's favorite. Yeah. That one, there's no competition in that. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Tony needs to desire the anointing ahead of Pastor Fryan. There's no competition. But at times, you will wish that God will anoint the two of them together. I saw a couple there when we were worshiping, just holding the wife. Beautiful. That is amazing. And worshiping the Lord together. That is so great. Number one, Paul, God told Cyrus, Dr. Sprague, that because I've anointed you, number one says, I am going to hold your hand. Somebody say, the Lord will hold my hand. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Remember the song you sang right now? Beautiful song from Elisa. It says, the Lord is going to do what? Yes. It was a prophetic song. You didn't know the message I was going to preach on tonight. And don't think that when you sing, you are just singing. I was watching every word, verse, line by line. He said, the Lord is going to hold my hands, and when I'm weak, he's going to give me strength. Hallelujah. Yeah. Number one, you imagine I am walking with a two-year-old baby. We're walking together, I'm holding the hand. Do you think the baby is going to fall? No. Why? Because I am stronger than the baby. Come on. And so, like we sang, another line in the song says, when I stumble, hallelujah. Yes, I say hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Come on, lift your hands and say, he's going to hold my hand. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord is somebody, the Lord is your strength. Yes. The Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew yes. her. But let me tell you, the, the, that strength, Pastor Tony, comes only by waiting. And it's not easy. We came waiting tonight. Intercessors, God bless you for what you're doing. Amazing. How I pray everyone here will be an intercessor waiting on the Lord. Yes. You will be a worshiper waiting on the Lord. Yes. And let me tell you, the Bible used eagle. I don't know if you know the eagle. And do you know the meaning of the word waiting? Let me tell you what it means. The eagle once in a lifetime will look for a nice rock where there are no trees and go and sit on the rock. And the eagle uses his own beak and pull his feathers off. And it sits there for six and a half months. Go to glue glue diet, do that. Go to the internet and put the soaring of the eagle and talk about, see what I'm talking about. How many of us, you see what the eagle does? The eagle goes and sits down for how many? Uh, he sits on the rock for how many months? Six months? And what is he waiting for? Waiting for the winds to what? To blow by. Yeah. And the eagle senses rain. Like the lions, the lion can smell a prey six miles away. Wow. Wow. That God made animals so different. And that is where we need to begin to smell things. We need to begin to feel God, what is going to happen from far. Yeah. Those who wait on the Lord, your senses and everything become sharp that you begin to sense where things are going. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and say, Victory Sarasota. God is going to do great things with this church in Jesus. There's a new era. Hallelujah. Behold, he's going to do things, new things here in Jesus' mighty name. Sister, you know what? The eagle... When the storms are gathering, the evil smells that. 
And he gets ready to what? Soar above the clouds. While other bears are looking for trees to hide in, the eagle is preparing to soar. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to soar in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, the problems of life will never touch me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because who is your strength? Somebody who is your strength say, the Lord is my one. Somebody, the Lord is your one. Somebody who is your strength. Hallelujah. That is why you will never fall and you will never stumble. Because the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. He will not let you fall. When you are getting ready to fall, you will hold your hands. And, and there's a powerful thing you say. That son is, it says, he will hold my hand and lead me on. You, are, you saying that, are you saying that, doctor, were you here only to listen to the music? Music is preaching. Right. At times, if you listen to what was going on there and you took them and made hold and pastor, friend said that you need to owe that that was sung tonight. You need to owe the presence of the Lord that was going on here tonight. Hallelujah, somebody. I say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So the Lord told Cyrus, brother, can you do me a favor? Where is Brother Nat? Will you throw it down for me? Go to, go to Isaiah and chapter. I want the New Living Translation. Put it on there for me. And I want to go through that with you. This is what the Lord says to Cyrus. His what? Anointed. Who's what? Who's what? Right, right hand and what? Number one. Anointed. Right right hand and it means what? Strength. Lord. The Lord is my what? Strength. Right. Hallelujah. Come on, say the Lord will hold my hands. Lord. I have no worries. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. And you know what he says? Number two, he says, I will empower you. Thank you, Lord. He holds your hands to do what? Empower. Let me use another version says that I'm going to subdue nations because of you. Because I'm anointing on you, he's going to do what? You know what that means? God is going to expand your territories in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I'm getting ready for what? Expansion. When, when, you know, when, when I preach, this is what I like. I want you to declare the word on your life. When you speak it, the Bible says when two or three agree on anything and we speak it here, it is done in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody decree it now. That I'm go- God is expanding me. Hallelujah. The Lord is doing what, somebody? Number one, the Lord is your what? He's going to do what? Strengthen me. And number two, he told Cyrus he's going to do what? I am going to what? Expand your territories in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I'm waiting for my expansion. I decree it. And the Bible says, whatever we decree where? It's decree where? Do you believe what you're saying, somebody? Come on, somebody says, come in in Jesus' name. I say, it's coming in Jesus' name. My expansion is my increase. It's coming somebody in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. We're speaking about how many things? And we are done with how many? Two already. Number one, he's going to do what? Hold what? And it stands for what? Strength. Strength. And number two, he's going to do what? Empower. Subdue what? Nations. Expand. Is somebody in your Bible saying subdue nations? Yeah. Yeah. The second verse says, the line says, I'm going to do what? Subdue what? Nations. And number three, you know what he says? I am going to lose the loins of kings. You don't know what that means in the Hebrew text. It means that when kings and people in high profile position hear of you because of the anointing, their knees will begin to shake. Respect is coming. The favor of God is coming to somebody because of God's anointing on you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let me prophesy to somebody right now. The boss who is giving you trouble at work, when the anointing hits your life, that boss will salute you when you get work. You don't have to speak anything. The anointing is going to make all the difference. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift your hands and say, we need the anointing of God. We need the presence of God in our lives. 
He makes all the difference. Hallelujah. Anointing somebody. Hallelujah. When anointing comes, fear and respect comes in. It says that I am going to loose the loins of kings. That when they meet you, they are going to respect you. I think this uh, microphone is not used to a black man's ear. <laughs> Next time, go to the store. You see, this is white. Go to the store and look for a black one. <laughs> look at the doctor. The doctor is doing this now. Who tells you we cannot have fun at church? Who tells you that? You don't need to go to a disco Saturday night. You need to come to church. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. If you, if you look for your joy in brandy or whiskey, there's something wrong with you. You need, uh, you need to get drunk with the Holy Spirit and you're talking and you're moving and everything changes. Hallelujah, somebody. I say hallelujah, somebody. I say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Number one, the Lord is going to do what? Because of what? The anointing. Number two, he's going to bring what? Expansion. Increase. Because of what? The anointing. And number three, he's going to lose what? Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes my boss is mean. But I tell you, the anointing is going to change him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. The anointing of God on my life is going to change him. Going to change her. I decree it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Lord. We are number what now? Number four. Let's go back there to the ball. Come on, bring it back. Brother Nett, number four, I need a verse. And you know what? He says that, after that, he says that I will lose, I, I will, the might, mighty kings will be what? Paralyzed with what? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, come on. Yeah. You know that? That is why you don't have to be afraid. Fear is not for a child of God. Yeah. You need to walk in power. God did not give us the spirit of what? Fear. Yeah. But what? Power. Love and what? That's what I told you. I don't think black. My mind is renewed. I refuse to do that. I have a sound mind. Hallelujah. You, you have the mind of who? Christ. The Bible says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, that we have the mind of who? That is why you are not ordinary. You are special. Come on, lift your hands and thank him tonight. Thank him tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, thank him tonight and say, I am special. Says, look here, I am not a friend to your pastors for nothing. We are going to change nations. Hallelujah. Somebody get ready in victory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. The man, the medical doctor is getting on the flight Wednesday. He's going to Jackson with a citywide crusade. I told him that. And that is what we do. He opened doors for me. I opened doors for him. That is a joint way. That is what we do together. There are mighty things ahead of us. Come on, lift your hands and thank God for your life. And say this with me. I refuse to die before my time. Hallelujah. I come against the spirit of cancer in Jesus' mighty name. That you refuse to die before your time. Number one, he's going to do what? And that stands for what? Number two, he's going to do what? Subdue what? And it means what? Increase. Expansion. Hallelujah. Number three, he's going to do what to kings? Paralyze them with what? Fear. Respect and favor and honor is coming to me in Jesus' name. And number four, you know what he says? Number four. Let's go back there and see what he says in number four. Listen to it. He says that their fortress gates will be what? When other versions, the new King James says, I'm going to open two leaf doors. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, year of open doors. Somebody this your year of what? Somebody this your year of what? Open doors. And open doors there, the meaning of that is opportunities are coming your way in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Opportunities are going to overflow. You come on, lift your hands, somebody, and receive right now, tonight. Receive doors opening to you now. Hallelujah. Dr. Sprite, let me tell you this. Most people do not know that God had a remote control before. You Americans know how to make remote control. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't get what I'm talking about. Here in the U.S., everything is very easy, simple. I go to Kenya a lot. At times, I go and preach. When I finish 9 p.m., I come out, a leopard is sitting outside the church. Like we go out now, the leopard is sitting outside the church. I brought a Messiah pastor to my church. We support them, bought them a tent. We do things. I'm going with nine people, 11 of my leaders, from November, October the 4th to the 11th. We will be in Kenya and Tanzania, just with the Messiahs in the bush. I was there, and we sit, they were doing a barbecue, and they put the meat on sticks and stick it to the ground and put a bonfire, and they push the meat when the, meat, the fire is going down. And uh, I was afraid because a leopard came and killed a dog the following night, the, the, the previous night. And we are sitting there, 10 p.m., making that for me. I said, well, you guys, they said, don't worry, Bishop. When they come, we know how to stop them. So don't worry. And let me tell you something, saints of God, you don't know, God knew how to make, this guy came to South Africa and the wife have not seen an elevator before, escalator. So the escalator is going, the wife wants to get on, he goes like this now to hold it so he doesn't fall. You don't know that God knows remote control before we knew it. Hallelujah. You don't know something? That is where when you are going to the door like this, the door slides open for you. God is going to slide doors open for you. You don't do anything. When God is pleased with you, he's sitting in his heaven and he said, Tony, my son is coming. I slide the doors wide open. Somebody say, doors are going to get open. Hallelujah. I said, doors are going to get what? Somebody said, I'm getting ready to enter. Hallelujah. Doors are opening. Grand spread doors are getting open for you. Come on, lift your hands and say, this is the beginning. I am getting ready. My expansion is coming in Jesus' name. You see this brother? He is having a problem with my beautiful accent. He tries to listen twice to get it right. You will get used to it. By the time I come here through three times, you'll get used to my accent now. You see, you speak American English. How are you doing, brother? How are you doing, man? I speak the Queen's English. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you? I've never had a birthday since I bought Gone Again. Amen. I have fun every day. Amen. When I get up in the morning, I get drunk in the spirit and I walk like a drunk man. I behave like a... I get excited in the presence. Come on, send your hands and thank God. <laughs> Lift your hands and thank God tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are number what? Number four. Is that right? So it's going to be a year of what? Open what? Come on, somebody lift your hands and receive your opportunities right now. Come in. God is going to make them happen. You don't have to do anything. Get ready to walk in the doors. All you do is catch his attention. Hallelujah. Catch his attention. About 40 something years ago, a beautiful lady from Devonport, Ivor, caught the attention of a medical doctor and he ran after this girl and he's sitting here with him tonight. He said, that's right. When a girl catches your attention, you follow her everything. When you, God catches, you catch God's attention, he will do everything for you. Yeah. Come Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and say, all I want is who? Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. All you want is who? Come on, let's go on number five. The same verse there. And then he says that, what? Gates will what? Be open and they will never be what? Shut. Come on, lift your hands and say, I decree today. No gate will be shut in front of me in Jesus' name. All gates that are shut are getting ready to open. Everything that the devil tried to stop me is open in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Number five, when doors get shut, there's no movement. And you get stopped. So somebody tell somebody tell them I'm going forward. Nothing is stopping me in Jesus' name. Yeah. Doors that are shut are opening right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse number two. We are finished. Verse number one. Verse number two. This is what the Lord says. I will do what? Somebody, the Lord is going to do what? 
That is what they were singing, the two beautiful ladies. You know what he says? I will hold my hand and what? He will hold your hand and what? Lead you what? On. Hallelujah, somebody. The Lord is going to what? Lead us. Come on, lift your hands and say, I refuse, I refuse. to be led by my husband. <laughs> I am tired of being led by a man. I am tired of being led by a woman. I want to be led by who? Somebody you want to be led by who? And Psalm 23 says, he, when he leads you, you know where he leads you to? To where the waters are what? Still and quiet waters. Hallelujah. And you know what he does? He leads you to the greener pastures. Somebody come on, lift your hands and thank him tonight. Thank, thank him tonight, somebody. Thank him tonight. He's getting ready to lead you, somebody. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say all oh, that I need is what? The anointing of God. Yeah. Let me tell you, you have an anointed church, anointed pastors, anointed praise and worship team, wonderful people. That is why you don't have to go anywhere. This is the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. I say it is what? Well. So get yourself ready and prepare yourself for, and I'm prophesying. This word, I may not have called you out to do fortune telling and tell you this case is broken, that one. I'll be doing that, but that's not important. I'm prophesying right now to somebody that doors are getting ready to open for you. I'm saying divine favor is coming upon your life. I'm prophesying if somebody you know, you will receive that right now. Number six. Number six, he says that leading. Who is going to be leading you? He's going to do what? Go where? Behind us? He's going to do what? Go where? He's going to lead us. And when he leads us, you know what he does? In the same verse, verse 2, he says, I will lead, go before you and do what? Do what to mountains? He's going to do what to mountains? It stands for challenges and problems and difficulties in your life. Come on, lift your hands and say, every problem of mine. God is going to make it a praying ground for me to walk. The cancer will not kill you before your time. The diabetes will never destroy your system in Jesus. I prophesy, I speak right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody I say, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Number seven is what? He's going to do what to mountains? Is that not beautiful? You don't have to be afraid. Your God will level mountains before you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Number eight. We are talking about how many things? Let me find out, Pastor Tony, if your students here are good students. Let me find out. Number one, the Lord is going to do what? And that stands for what? Number two, he's going to do what? Subdue nations, and that stands for what? Good class. I give you 80 over 100. We're going to see what to do. Number three, he's going to do what to kings? And that stands for what? Number five. Number four, he's going to do what? And that stands for what? Great class. Number five, what is going to happen to? No door shall be what? Ah, it stands for what? Movement. <laughs> Number six is what Pastor Frank. Let's clap our hands for Pastor Frank. He's a good listener. Let's clap our hands for our mother. He's a great lady. Number six, he's going to do what? Go where? He will be leading us. Hallelujah. And number seven, he will be doing what? And number eight. Somebody say number eight. What is he going to do? I will what? Smash gates of brands and cut bars of, somebody say deliverance. Yeah. Somebody say, I say my deliverance is coming in Jesus' name. Yeah. Wherever the devil has placed me, my deliverance is coming. Somebody, come on, lift your hands and receive your deliverance. Deliverance from every curse. Every curse, you are delivered from every curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The curse, the curse of poverty in your life is broken tonight in Jesus' mighty name. The curse, the curse of cancer killing your seed. You will not die like your father, your mother died through cancer. That will not happen to you. You are delivered tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift your hands and say, I receive my deliverance. You know what? 
Eliza and the group sang this evening and said that he's going to set us what? He's going to set us what? And that is deliverance. You are set free from anything that will oppress you, that will stop you. Come on, lift your hands and accept your freedom tonight. I serve your freedom tonight. Hallelujah. I say receive your freedom tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The last one, you will like it. And I will turn the microphone over to him. And I will do what? Somebody, you will do what? Treasures that is hidden where? And you will give you what? Riches that is in secret places. Come on, lift your hands and say, I receive my wealth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Money answers how many things? Money answers how many things? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, 10, 19, he said, Money answers how many things? Come on, lift your hands and say, Money, money. is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, Money. Money. Somebody say money. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. I refuse to be poor. All my debts are canceled. All my debts are paid for in Jesus' mighty name, somebody. I prophesy to you right now, it's going to happen in Jesus' name. Come on, receive it. Hallelujah. I say receive it. Hallelujah. If God can pick and nothing, and nobody boy, a silly boy like me, nothing boy from a bush in Ghana. And before I get home within a month, 20 flies within a month. Come here five times in a year, all over. At times I get to London, preach. I get there 7 a.m., 13 hours flying from Johannesburg, preach in the morning, and finish and get back on the flight and leave the same day. Don't sit here and underestimate yourself. Come on, stand to your feet and lift your hands. Stand to your feet and lift your hands and say, I received all that God has for my life. I received the anointing of God over my life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah,